Bone marrow for breakfast. Cool. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm Zachary Fowler. And that's the Wooded Beardsman. And this is season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods. So last October, I headed up to the backwoods of Canada to meet up with the Wooded Beardsman and do just that for seven days. Last time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4. Alright, got my first fish here in Canada. Somebody's got fish envy. I got two and he's got no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's just something so manly about pushing over a tree. There we go. First fish. Beautiful fish. And now, today's episode, bone marrow for breakfast. <sighs> Good morning. Coming into day six. Whoa, 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 what is going on here? You said day six, that says day seven. This is confusing, I'm confused. I made a mistake. Right from the beginning, it should have been day zero into the wild because you can't eat a day of wild food until you've eaten a day of wild food. So check out the playlist below. They're all in order in the right way there. You can watch the two prequel episodes and there will be two final episodes after the whole eating wild part with a goose hunt and an interview with a wooded beardsman asking him all the hard questions. Catfish last night was awesome. Uh, let's see what we can get up to today. Good morning, world. I don't think so. Jeans boy! Try and boil off our stew and flip the duck over. Make sure it gets a full cook. Look at all the chunks of fat still in there. And that's just fatty juices all boiling away. Mmm. 
just want to make sure we get a boil on this every day, every 24 hours to boil off any bacteria that are starting to build up in there that can make us sick. Got our bare leg, we're going to throw it in the fire, cook it up on the coals and be able to crack it open and eat the bone marrow. Bone marrow for breakfast. Good? Like like that? Sure. Do it. Catfish over there? Yeah. This looks like the breakfast of champions. I just found some chanterelles. Look at that. Woohoo! Score! Yummy, delicious chanterelles. But always make sure you know exactly what you're picking for mushrooms. You don't want to pick the wrong mushroom. I don't care. <laughs> Alright, so our bones cracked a little bit prematurely, but we snagged them out of there. I think we might have lost, you know, half of what we got. But still something in there. And, uh... Let me see that uh, seasoning spice. I'm oh, gonna yeah, sure. put a little bit of that on it to make a little more flavor. And use my little stick here to jam it down into the bone to muck up everything that's left in there. Then we just slurp it out of there. It's got like a little bone spigot basically. Mm. Mm. Wow, that is rich. That is good. Cool. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> There's some calories in there. Yeah. I got all over my beard, do I? Basically, all the delicious sounds. That's the fat and, and stuff there. The marrow getting all gushed up. And try to rake it out of there with my chopstick. Oh. Bone marrow for breakfast. <laughs> now I just wish we had more of it. Yeah. Also have the air bladder from the catfish. I'm gonna throw that onto a hot rock and sizzle that up. It's got a lot of fat in it. That'll be a tasty little treat. Looks kind of like a tongue, but that's the air bladder from the catfish. The key ingredient to every bushcraft meal is the wadobo spice. His own special recipe. Now that came from a thing called adobo. Um, do you want the long story or the short story? The short story. Okay, so I went to Dominican and I tried to figure out what spice they, uses, they used and they called it um, adobo when I researched it and I started, started researching adobo and they gave me a list of spices so basically I found one recipe online and I imitated it and it came up with this spice so I and then somebody else called it um, instead of calling it adobo they called it woodobo because wood wood beard so yeah basically it's a blend of spices and it works on everything every wild game that so far that I've eaten fish bird bear it just complements everything it has like this little hint of Mexican food slash Thai food slash I don't know every time I have it I feel like I I bring some other memory up of a delicious meal from some different place I've been or different restaurant type of restaurant Italian it's like whatever's on your mind at the time it detects what you're craving and makes it for you Enjoy. look at that flaky juicy catfish cooked over the coals a little bit of the wadobo. That is that is awesome. This is delicacy. Delicacy being out here. Amazing. Mmm. 
It just melts in your mouth. So much flavor. I always thought catfish was like a muddy, you know, bottom feeding, gross thing. This has to be one of the most delicious fish. I'd almost say I prefer it over like the shard, or the rainbow trout, because of the the way it just the meat rakes off, and there's so much of it, and, none, and there's none of those bones and bone issues that you have with rainbow trout. Just so many bones, it's like it's so tasty, but so so much work. Maybe even fry some of it up in a bear fat and see what that's like too. But it doesn't even need it. Cooked over the coals, super juicy. So good. Now well, that's a breakfast of champions right there. So far, six days. Very content with eating just wild foods and the energies I'm getting from them. Makes me feel like I should just be doing this all the time. So I'm missing the greens. Oh, and broccoli. I love broccoli. Fresh broccoli on my salad. So those things, I'm missing those a little bit out here. But this food is very sustenant rich, energy rich food. Definitely a way to win. All right, so that we got our bladder, our catfish bladder. It's gonna be chewy, so it's a warning. Yeah. Fair warning. Zach's showing his people, I'm gonna show my people. So, you can eat the bladder. The bladder's good, it's fatty. It's what makes the fish float, but it's chewy. Yeah. It's really chewy, so ready? One, two, three, go. Yeah. It has like no flavor whatsoever. No flavor at all. No. It doesn't taste fatty necessarily either. No. Not necessarily fatty, but. This is a race so you can chew their chewy piece up first. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little, uh, a little chewy. A lot chewy. <laughs> <laughs> we could eat it. But it is, it does chew up. Yeah. Not like some fibery chewy things we eat. We've eaten fish cuts before. Like that bear meat the first, or beaver or bear and things like, no, the bear meat the first day. You yeah, know, that, 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 first day is chewy, second was, day it tenderizes. Oh, yeah. It was like almost impossible to chew up a chunk of that bear meat after one stewing. Yeah. But. Anyway, guys, you can eat the whole thing. We've eaten the guts. The only thing we haven't eaten is the gills. We've eaten the eyes, the brain, the skin, the, the bladder. There's no part of the animal we haven't eaten yet. The mm. fins, like it's all edible except for down in the true nature of a hunter gatherer we are picking up moving to a new location i'm just polishing off the last of this catfish we uh caught a bunch last night if you haven't seen that yet go back and watch the former video on my channel and on chris's channel our adventure out here catfishing at night caught us three good ones but uh then caught us nothing but snags and lost hooks so we're gonna go for pike Oh, such a good fish. Moving locations isn't an easy thing. It means lots of packing. So we're utilizing what we have, the car. Back up, you're gonna hit the tree. Watch it. Good? Yeah, mate. Yeah, watch the stuff in the front. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, good. Woohoo! Nailed it! <laughs> we made it! This episode has been brought to you in part by Bath Subaru on Route 1 in Woolwich, Maine. They set me up with a beautiful orange Subaru Crosstrek 2013. I'm gonna mod it all out. She's gonna be the new Mischief Mobile. Maybe not as modded out as this, but something in between so I can do some road miles and some adventuring in it. Maybe a little bit of camper action on top. So if you're in the market for a bit of adventure, stop on by Bath Subaru. Tell them Fowler sent you. Links in the description below.
right, we are at a new location, the Pike Spot. Once again, fairly remote and full of moose tracks. Look at the size of those moose tracks. All through here, he's coming down to your drink. Maybe we'll see something in the night. Here, I'm coming out here for a drink in the morning or something like that. Wouldn't that be fun? Look at that, big old hunks of wiggly bear fat. Mm. For some reason, it's just getting myself to sit down and take that first bite, and then I'm all, all about it. Everywhere I go, I just make myself some chopsticks. The easiest thing to make, and once you get the hang of them, you're good. Thanks Chris, today on Backwoods Iron Chef, we have bear meat. We're gonna stew it, steak it, fry it, mix it with some grouse and some catfish, and eat it. <laughs> oh wait, there's more. A bunch of fat. That's right. Yeah. How's that look? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that a pile of fat right there was about what, three times that size when we started the challenge? Oh, at least. At least three times the size of this. But so we've eaten. I'm just gonna pick a few hairs off yeah, for you. No worries. Yeah. A few go hairs. Go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. There's one nice little steak. This bear meat is hard to work. It's so soft. I'm used to butchering up the meat that we raised, letting it hang for a little bit, and working it when it's very cool so it's firm. And last but not least, I'm gonna chuck the bone in there. So we cook every last bit. It's got like, I don't know, we got like 60% fat calories to 70% fat calories to like 40%, 50% protein, so. Good mix. Add a little water. So it doesn't just burn in the pan. And we'll put her on. Oh.
All right, steaks are done. Cooked fully through. A little sizzled on one side, some of them. Looking good, time to eat. What do you think? It's good. Good, tough? It's chewy. Chewy? Yeah. That's what we figured, right? Yeah, we knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, I just kinda wanted the taste of a steak, right? Yeah, oh, the, the flavor's amazing. Actually, you know what I usually do in situations like this? The trick is to have mm. two pieces of steak. Yeah, yeah. Use your bottom piece of steak as your cutting board for your top piece of steak. Mm -hmm. And you're good to go. And I went down and I washed my knife. I had a little camp soap I keep with me. Washed my knife and my chopsticks. So we're not contaminating it with raw cuttings. I think the trick is gonna be small pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like how small? Like is that yeah. too big? Bites, swallow size pieces. Swal uh, swallow size. It's good, there's nothing wrong with it. Now you know why we stew. It's Actually, no, that's not, not too bad. That's not bad. I, I expected it to be as bad as that first one after a little bit. I think my piece is too big. Probably why it's gonna be trickier. Dime size diameter, mm. that's the trick mm. right there. Yeah, it's good, but it's better small. Always a fine piece. Mm hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Let the cutting tools do the work, not your teeth. Mm. I wish I had then the mushrooms. I forgot all about them until just a couple seconds ago. All right, enjoy your steak. I'm going to bed. All right, good night. It's wet out here. It's wet, wet, wet. It's getting wetter by the second. I've had enough of this. I'm find my hammock. There we go. Ah, oh, it's dry under here. It must only be like 7.30. But, moving days. Moving camp, cooking food, dragging out firewood, making that stew that we weren't even gonna eat but we have to to, to preserve our food so we don't waste any. All of it takes a great deal of effort, which is very rewarding, so. Just in case you're wondering what I use for toothpaste, it's earth paste from Redmond Real Salt and Redmond Clay from the Redmond Trading Company, Harbor City, Utah. Mined out there in Utah. Good stuff. It sent me like a lifetime supply after winning a loan of salt and toothpaste, and I haven't had to purchase any more of that. It's uh, it's probably not a lifetime supply. I'm like halfway through it. So if you guys see this in another year, if you want to send me another care package, <laughs> I'm addicted now. Good stuff. Makes your teeth just feel so clean, like you got a brand new set of chompers. Next time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4. Oh, it's raining so hard, it's so loud. Look at this, that was not... That's across my trail, that came down right here. That one came down over there near Chris's tent over there. That's like... It, it missed him by feet. And one last full day of adventure and a massive feast to, to send us off on our final day. Ugh, that stinks. That was apparently a bad choice in trees. It started to rip up from the ground and stuff. So I had to put a come along strap on it. I'm picking small trees like this like all the time. I guess I've been pushing the limit. Uh, I was all dry and all cozy and ready to get in. And I jumped in my hammock and the tree was like and the whole hammock hit the ground. I think I fixed it. Let's try attempt two. There we go. Zipped in, secure. Cozy. Let's hope that tree holds. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. <laughs>
This has been an awesome adventure. We only got one more day of adventure as far as the Wilderness Living Challenge. And then we're going to be weighing out. And make sure you check out the playlist below in the description where you can watch Chris's channel and his take. It's a very different take. You know, we're both different people and we've both been seeing and doing different things as the days go on. Check it out and watch it from the beginning on both of our channels. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Fowler out.